Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Procrastinated Podcast. So in my continued effort to sort of spice up the podcast, sort of change the flow of it, change the way I go about it, this week I attempted to do something a bit different than what I've done in the past, and this time it was actually different. Last week I said, oh, it was different, and it kind of followed the similar format with different cuts and shots, but this week I decided I wanted to go play golf and document my thoughts during my round of golf. Before you click off, I know you, all of you may not be interested in golf, but let me tell you, when you play golf, it takes a long time. You, you play golf for, if you play 18 holes, it takes about three to four hours. So you're out there for a while. And when you're out there for a while, especially on, when you're on your own, that gives you a lot of time to think. If you watch any of these episodes, you know my mind can tend to water. So I thought it'd be fun if I sort of documented my thoughts during the round. Now I thought I had a really good idea, but I ran into trouble when it came to editing this week's video right now when I'm talking to you. Some of the footage did not go through. It said the file type was not supported, there was an error. So I only have part of the footage, so I'm gonna take some time here, to sort of walk you through the footage, give you an idea of where I was coming from, so maybe give a little more context, and it's not just a bunch of random clips thrown together. Let's get into it. Oh, that's a really good start. That's an impressive slice. As you can see, I got up to a smoking hot start having hit two shots off the first tee because my first one was that terrible. I then found myself on the right side of the hole with a tree in front of me, which was like half in front of my shot, half not. So my, my option was either to hit under it or over it. I opted to hit over it. Let's see how that went. Oh yeah. Not exactly over, but I mean, it works. It was <laughs> perfectly executed as it just rolled up to the green, didn't get off the ground for more than a half second. It ended up about a foot or so off the green and I chipped up and it was, it was a rough first hole. And let me tell you, the second hole did not get much better. Oh my God, Matthew. Oh my God. I started off the day rough with two double bogeys, 12 shots through two holes. Not good, people. Not good. If there's one thing that can frustrate you more on a golf course than you playing bad, it's other golfers. Obviously, when you're on a golf course, you're not always by yourself. Oftentimes, there'll be a group in front of you and frequently a group behind you as well. So you have to move at a certain pace. You have to be aware of those around you. You have to be paying attention. It can be extremely frustrating when somebody is not paying attention and just going at their pace, moseying along through the golf course when you're just waiting behind them essentially at every single shot. It can turn a three hour round into a five hour round very easily. As these things usually work out, it wasn't the group in front of me's fault. It was the group in front of them. It was a group of four people that hadn't really played golf before. And eventually I had to play the waiting game. We have an interesting situation developing in front of me. The group that was in front of me is now two groups ahead of me as the group ahead of them, this group right here, these two cards, has let them play through up there. So now I'm still playing the waiting game, but no longer behind the group I was waiting on before. It's just the group that was in front of them. Surely it's only a matter of one or two holes before they let me play through? They better. I mean, but also I say they better, but I don't really care. I'm not really waiting on anything. I'm just chilling. So, <laughs> While you're playing the waiting game and on a golf course, just taking your time, it's very easy and enjoyable to take your time to look around you and take in the scenery. A lot of golf courses can have somewhat similar scenery as neighborhoods are often paired with golf courses because I don't know if you know this, but rich white people and golf, mm, they go together like peanut butter and jelly baby. Rich old white people and golf may be one of the greatest pairings in the history of the world. Growing up, I was blessed enough to live in one of these neighborhoods, actually, believe it or not. Granted, it was in a smaller town, so not quite like this, but very fairly similar. And living in a nice neighborhood, you're quickly labeled as a spoiled rich kid, and that's whatever. People like to throw out titles, that's fine. But let me tell you, living in the neighborhood was a wonderful thing. I had a great time. It was definitely a great place to grow up, although it may have been a sort of cushy, cushy lifestyle, but that's not all bad. I can take the hate because there's a lot of good. With that cushy, cushy lifestyle brings some nice things, like some nice ass houses, some beautiful things. I don't want to film these people's houses for too long in case they see me, but it is lovely. So we have 150 to the pin. 152 to the pin, technically. 
let's see what your boy can do. You didn't see that. That that didn't happen. You didn't you didn't that that this ball was always white. Okay, well all things considered, it went very poorly. I was 150 yards that side, the other side of the green. I am now uh, let's say 40 yards the other side of the green, and this is the one ball, first ball that I hit, and my second shot is right there. Not much better. While things may not always go to plan, luckily, golf takes a while, and during the course of rounds, you get many different shots. You could have a really bad hole, and then you could follow that up with a really good hole. Along with that, there are a lot of different kinds of holes on the golf course, from par threes to par fours to par fives. If you don't understand, the par is how many shots it's expected you take to get from the tee box to the hole. Par threes are particularly exciting as they give you an opportunity, or the best opportunity, to get a hole in one. Let's take a look at my best attempt of the day. Okay, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're back for another par three. 128 yards to the pin. Let's see what I can do. Well, that didn't exactly go to plan, now did it? Let's see if I can finish this up though. All right, well, may have used my illegal backboard, but that's a par. Oh boy. How? Oh. Golf as a sport is interesting because it's definitely a mental game. I mean, all sports are kind of mental games. You have to, there's some mental aspects to them. You have to have a sports IQ or whatever, but golf is a unique one. It's really a mental game. It's really all about, it's just in between your ears, man. It's Because I, I, I know the functionality of a good golf swing. I know how to hit a golf swing properly, how to properly hit a golf ball. So like, theoretically it's within my body to shoot like shoot par shoot like 72 on 18 holes but i don't do that i can't do that i'm unable to do that but i know the mechanics to do it and like on a good day i could shoot like an, a 90 let's say an 88 or something but then like today for the whole day i'm gonna shoot like 110 20 or 30 strokes worse and it's all just because of my mental preparedness or whatever else my execution such a mental game. Arnold Palmer once said, golf is deceptively simple and endlessly complicated. It satisfies the soul and frustrates the intellect. It is at the same time rewarding and maddening and is without a doubt the greatest game mankind has ever invented. I read you this quote just to sort of speak to what I was saying in the previous clip about golf being a mental game. It's very simple. The idea of whacking a little ball through the woods into a cup that somebody has slammed into the ground, just having fun, lollygagging through the trees, seems very simple on its face. But then, once you actually get to executing the ideal and taking your brain, putting it to the ground, and trying to hit a golf shot, and getting it into the hole in the least amount of tries possible, it's a lot more easier said than done. Despite this mental challenge of golf, it is one of the more enjoyable things that I have in my life. I started playing golf at a fairly young age. That's why my golf swing is the way it is. That's why I am as good as I am or as bad as I am, whatever I want to go. It is perhaps my favorite sport to actually play. It's a true getaway. A true getaway is the way I would describe it. It's a way to firmly remove yourself from the world that you get caught up in, whatever stress I may have, you may have. It's a Dare I say the best way to take a break from your ongoing world and stop and think and look around, get some exercise, take the time for you. And that's why I cherish it so much. I love it. It's a major part of who I am. Much like hole one, let's round this out with a shot by shot follow of hole 18. Hopefully I can end a little bit better than I started. I thought that was pretty good. Let's see.
camera. That is kind of it for this day's round of golf. Let's uh, let's check the scores and uh, see where we're at for the day. So here's my scorecard. Played at Pebble Brook near where my brother lives. There's two courses. Here's my score though. Here's what we were talking about. Here's the money shot. I played pretty well, honestly. 46 on the front, 42 on the back for a total of 88. Definitely, definitely left some strokes out there. This is definitely not all true. This is not 100% realistic. Let's say I more realistically probably shot around 100. But I played pretty well. It was, it was, it was, it was a pretty good day, honestly. I'm not, I'm not that upset about it. It was all right. Definitely more therapeutic than anything. Thank you very much for watching this, this week's episode of the Procrastinator Podcast. Once again, taking a different form. Also, I know it's a shorter episode, but clearly a different kind of video. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed making this video very much. Playing golf was fun. Filming the content was fun. If only I had all of it, maybe it would have been an even better video, maybe even more fun. But uh, yeah, this has been all. I've been your host, Matthew B. Stein. You've been fantastic as always. He has been Tito B, Mr. Boy, whatever you want to call him. This has been sponsored by Prime. Go buy it. I will see you next week in next week's episode of TPP. So long, howdly doodly. <laughs>